big part of the workflow in Pro Tools involves editing, navigating, and selecting across your session to create things. In this case, we're going to take a look at editing, so that way we can do things like copy and paste, do repeats, duplicates, possibly edits out of the playback. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the various functions you can do when it comes to editing and navigating across a session. The most widely used tool for navigating is your selector tool. If you remember your keyboard shortcuts, F7 across the top of the keyboard will select the selector tool. This tool allows you to navigate across your session simply by clicking with your mouse. Wherever you place your insertion point, that's where playback and or record will happen from. Keep in mind that if you ever want to take your insertion point all the way back to the very beginning of the session, you press the return key on the keyboard. To make a selection with the selector tool, you simply click and drag with your mouse. Now this can be done within the context of one clip, or you can actually select the entire clip beginning to end by double clicking within it. If you have multiple clips on a track and you want to select everything on that track, triple click. Furthermore, your selector tool will also allow you to select across multiple tracks if you need to create a multi-track edit simply by clicking and dragging down. Now, if you ever have a selection and you want to adjust the length, you have to hold down the shift key. If you don't hold down the shift key and you simply click with your mouse, you're redefining your insertion point in time, therefore losing the selection. If you ever do this though, and you want to gain that selection back really quick, you can go back to the edit menu. There's a function here called restore last selection. One other way to adjust the selection length on screen is by actually going up to the rulers and adjusting the in and out arrows. Notice that at the beginning of selection you have an in arrow and at the end an out arrow. You can simply click these arrows and it will adjust the selection no matter how many tracks it encompasses. While using your selector tool is a very easy and convenient way to navigate across time within a session and make a selection, sometimes your clients might ask you for slightly different things. In this case, our client would like us to go between each of the individual kick drum hits that lives on this loop track. So let's go ahead and zoom in real quick. And I'm going to hit the return key to go back to the beginning. So what we'd like to do is actually take our insertion point from the beginning of the first clip here to the end of the clip and then hop to the next beginning, hop to the next end. So in this case, we're going to use our tab key. Once you hit tab, it will take your insertion point to the next clip boundary. That could be the beginning or the end of an audio clip, MIDI clip, or video clip. Now to take this one step further, you can also use this to make selections in time. If you throw in the shift key with the tab function, it will also select while it moves to the next clip boundary. So if I do shift and tab now, it will select from that beginning to that end clip. And when I hit shift tab again, it will select to the next clip boundary, and so on and so forth. Since the tab key takes us forward in time between clip boundaries, there might be a need to go backwards in time between clip boundaries. This would be the option tab or alt tab on a PC. And if you want to use the option tab function to go backwards and select at the same time, throw in shift with this keyboard shortcut. Yet another way to make a selection on screen is while the session's actually playing back. Sometimes there's a need for this to mark in and out points that we'll then go and refine later in terms of adjusting the selection. But during playback, you can actually hit the down arrow on your keyboard to designate an in point and the up arrow to designate an out point as the playhead is playing across the session. You see that the play had kept on going, and every time I hit the up arrow, it'll extend the end of the selection to always be in time with the playhead. This allows you to make a selection on the fly during playback. Now, generally, you might have to go in and refine this selection. So just remember that if you ever want to keep a selection and extend its beginning or its end, hold down the shift key and use your selector tool to adjust the boundaries. Yet another way to make a selection is by actually modifying the tab key. 
Now you know that the tab key takes your insertion point between the beginning to the end of the next clip in the chain. However, right below the zoom tool, there's a button called tab to transients. This will modify the tab function to move your insertion point between transient hits within an audio clip on a track as opposed to just the beginning and the ends of the clip. Let's go ahead and take a look at our loop track that we have. Now that I have tab to transient active, when I hit the tab function in this clip, notice what happens. It's moving to the next transient hit within the audio. And if you throw in the shift key with this, it will select just as a normal tab function will. This is a very handy function, especially when dealing with drum loops. I want to isolate one measure of this drum loop and not use the entire thing. So a quick way to do this would be to back up to the very beginning by hitting the return key and then holding shift tab. And now we'll just audition this and we're going to solo it. Sounds good so far. Let's go ahead and audition it with the loop on so that way we hear it loop back on itself. Fantastic. Now that we have the edit, a really quick function in this case would be to trim out the rest of the audio that we don't want to use. Now we don't want to use the trim tool in this case because we already have a selection. Just so you know, the trim tool is actually a byproduct of a trim function under the edit menu. So if we go to the edit menu, we have a trim clip and it's called trim clip to selection or command in the letter T, control T on a PC. That quickly allowed us to cut out everything that wasn't selected within the audio clip. And we got to that selection by using tab to transients to identify the transient hits within the audio itself. One thing that you've noticed I've been doing this whole time is zooming in and out quite a bit. So there's actually a couple of little shortcuts to help with this. Aside from the command and bracket keys, you also have some zoom presets. Notice these five buttons right below the zoom arrows. These zoom presets allow you to embed five settings so that way you don't have to constantly zoom in and out. You can just simply click that button and go right to that zoom setting. The way you do this is you first go to the zoom setting that you want to remember. So I'll back out and just look at the entirety of my session right now. You hold down the command key, this would be control on a PC, and then you click on the number that you want to identify with the zoom setting. The number flashes blue for a quick second. And now at any zoom level that you might be at, when you hit that number, it goes right back to the zoom setting that you embedded. So in this case, I'm just going to go through and make a couple more. I'll make another one that's a little bit closer. Hold down command, click on number two. Great. So now we have two zoom profiles that we can switch between. And we have three more that we can use for whatever was necessary within our session.